Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to MST.TV. This is Nishi here bringing you all another Market Watch episode. So big news from last week, we had the contents of the 2020 Megatons fully spoiled and holy crap, they are amazing. I was really surprised by just how many good reprints they included. Like the past few years, they've excluded certain cards from being reprinted in the tins, but this year they put in every single high dollar card, cards like Appaloosa, IP, Borlode Savage Dragon, but they also put in some of the more obscure cards, right? Things like Psychic Wielder or Omni Dragon Brotar, which will help to stop things from spiking up randomly. Combined with the reprints of cards from Infinity Chasers like the Infinitrex, the 2020 Megatons will definitely have a ton of value and they'll definitely be worth picking up. So today we are going to break down some card price trends as a result of these Megaton reveals so that you guys can put yourselves in the best positions possible for when the Megatons drop later this month. Let's get started. So obviously one of the big chase cards from the set is definitely going to be Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Dragoon is an absolute powerhouse of a card that literally warped the format in the OCG and has the potential to see play in so many different decks because of how compact the engine used to make it can be. There are of course ways to get around this card, things like Forbidden Droplet or Dark Ruler No More or the Kaijus, but it is still a very legitimate threat that your deck needs to have a way to answer. Now we actually found out that this card will be an ultra rare in the tins, which is encouraging because each pack in the tins will now have two supers and two ultra rares, so theoretically that means you have a higher chance of pulling Dragoon. However, I think that there's definitely a really strong chance that Dragoon is actually going to be short printed in the tins. Remember, Konami has only said that they would stop short printing in the core sets and hasn't said anything about side sets or other products. I think that a lot of people are expecting this, and as a result, we're currently seeing pre-orders for Dragoon at $60 a piece on TCG Player, which is relatively high. I mean, realistically, you can still order a case of tins for about $190 to $200 US from a lot of different sources, and I don't think that a single Dragoon is going to be worth like a third of the value of a case, unless like they only print one every two cases or something crazy like that. I think that a more realistic estimate is anywhere between the $30 to $50 range, probably a bit closer to $30 if the card is maybe easier to pull than people expect and maybe isn't as dominant in the meta as it was in the OCG or even approaching $45 to $50 if, say, it's harder to pull, and or it plays an extremely significant role in the meta. I do think that if it does hit that $45 to $50 mark, that is something it's going to hit after a couple of months of the Mega Tins being released, and initially on the release of the tins, I do think that it is going to settle closer to that $30 mark. Next up, let's take a look at IP Masquerina. So IP was basically a staple card in most extra decks since its release because it gave everything the ability to make Nightmare Unicorn during your opponent's turn for some disruption, as well as made cards like Avramax incredibly difficult to deal with, and as a result, this reprint of IP is a very welcome one. I think that the expectation here is that IP is going to be reprinted as a Prismatic Secret Air, which would look absolutely beautiful. Now IP has fallen considerably in price, it was up at the $45 to $50 mark for quite a while and is now down at around the $24 mark. I think that because we're assuming that the reprint is going to be a higher, nicer looking rarity, the ultras are actually going to drop a bit further, down to around the $15 to $20 mark. And long term, it's actually the prismatic secret rare that I think will increase in value over time. It's a bit difficult to compare to last year's Megaton since we didn't really have an ultra rare that's on par with IP Mascarena or Borrowed Savage Dragon, but for me personally, when I think about cards like Altergeist Multifaker or Heritage of the Chalice, I personally would rather play them in secret than in ultra rare, and I know that there's a lot of people out there that think the same way, despite the fact that the ultra rare is the original print. There is of course still the Starlight Rare IP, but I think that that's such an extreme price point, I don't think that this reprint of IP is going to affect the price at all. Obviously, if IP is a super or a common for whatever reason, then the Ultra is the highest rarity and it will do a better job of retaining value, but with the expectation that we're going to see reprints in a technically higher rarity, I do think that cards like IP and Savage Dragon are actually things that I would recommend offloading right now if you haven't already done that a few months ago, and instead using that money to pick up multiple copies of their secret rare reprints, which are going to be a lot more visually appealing to players and therefore easier to move, and are going to see a greater percentage increase in price over the long run. Okay, so the next couple of things we're going to take a look at are fairly closely related, and it's going to be up to you guys to figure out which cards fall into each of these respective categories. 
So this is the opposite of IP, right? We're looking at cards that were secret rares in the original set and original printing and are going to be reprinted in a lower rarity. Now, these cards are generally going to be great value in the tins themselves. When we think of something like Star Leech Safer, which was actually $40 to $45 for quite a while, we're now going to be able to pick up a reprinted copy of Safer for probably between $5 to $10 each, and the original secret rares have also dropped to around $20 a piece. Now, in Safer's case, Safer is a really key card in Dragon Link, and Dragon Link is definitely still a really viable deck in the format, with the Rocket Engine still intact and cards like Black Metal Dragon and Gar Dragon LP and Pisty still available. Obviously, it's nice that we can get the card for cheaper, but we have to remember that this time, the original printing is what's the highest rarity, so it's more likely to retain value over time, especially if it's a key card in a meta deck. What we'll typically see is an overreaction in the short term, because all of a sudden everyone will have access to safer in some rarity, and then over time, we see the original prints get back to being more and more expensive, particularly when they're meta viable. Let's take a look at something like Nightmare Unicorn, an extra deck staple that was originally a secret rare. It was up at $20 to $25 a piece, and then it was reprinted as an ultra rare in last year's tins. The secret rares people were offloading them for $10 or so initially, but gradually they climbed back up in price to $25 to $30 or so after it started to see a lot more play alongside IP Mascarena. I would definitely expect a card like Starleach Safer to follow a very similar trend. It could very easily dip back down to that $10 to $15 mark for its original secret rare print once everyone has copies of Safer and people overreact and they offload their copies, but then over time, increase back up to that $25 to $30 mark just because it's the original secret rare version and people will want to bling out a deck like Dragon Link assuming that the deck is still viable. I definitely think that you guys should keep your eyes open at your locals or wherever you guys are looking at cards for original print secret rares that are meta relevant and when they dip in price to a point that feels too low and definitely consider picking them up and holding on to them for when they eventually bounce back up in price. Obviously I'm not saying that you should be going out and investing in secret rare safe rates or anything like that, but rather just keep this idea at the back of your mind and then take advantage of the opportunity if it happens to come up. Now, on the other hand, let's take a look at a card like Serzial, Watcher of the Evil Eye. Whereas with Seyfert before, we were looking at a card that has a lot of potential to hold long-term value because of its meta viability, with Serzial, we're looking at something that has never really been part of the meta before, and probably isn't going to be anytime soon. In Serzial's case, it was only worth anything because it was short-printed in a side set, and was therefore relatively difficult to pull, and hard to find. However, once a card like this gets reprinted, even though the reprint is in a lower rarity, this will absolutely shred this card's value. When we look back at the 2019 Megatons, we saw Beat, Bladesman for Hire, and Mayhem for Hire reprinted as an ultra rare and common respectively, and although the original secret rares were before up at $15 to $20 each before the reprint, you can now grab each of them for less than $5 a piece. I would say that the same theory applies to cards like Witchcrafter, Golem, Aruru, or Abomination's Prison, cards that were a little bit expensive but never really saw any meta play, they just retained value more because they were a bit harder to pull. Sometimes it's going to be a fine line, right? With something like Get Out or Marincess Coral Anemone, which have the potential to be a meta piece but haven't really shown it before, so it's up to you if you want to bother picking up cards like that when the prices of the originals dip, because you could be making an investment that has a great return potential, or you could be stuck sitting on a dead card with no demand for quite some time. So not all of the secret rares reprinted in the set are going to be ones that you should buy after they dip. Some of them are going to be busts that you don't want to have sunk your money into. Okay, so let's briefly take a look at Pot of Extravagance. This is kind of an odd one and sort of a unique case. So we all know about this card and how it can single-handedly make certain decks relevant, decks like Altergeist or Subterror that maybe aren't super dependent on their extra deck in order to play the game. This card was extremely expensive when it was only available as a secret rare, but when it was reprinted as an ultra in Toon Chaos, it did dip quite a bit because of the reprint. Uh, the ultras did actually stay afloat at around $40 each, which is relatively expensive. A large factor here being the limited availability of Toon Chaos due to the production issues that I'm sure you guys know about, since a lot of places didn't get as much Toon Chaos in stock as they wanted or as they ordered. As much as this is a key card for different decks, it isn't really something that's meta relevant at the moment, 
This combined with the fact that this is going to be the third printing of the card could be something that will tear down the price of Pot of Extravagance. We've already seen the price of the Ultra Rares from Toon Chaos dip to $25 a piece, which is actually really understandable because technically these Ultras are mid-rarity, they aren't the original print secret rares, which are going to do a better job of retaining value in the long run. Ultimately, the price of the Ultra Rare reprint will depend largely on the rarity of extravagance in the tins and whether or not it is short printed. If we see it as a prismatic secret rare and it's quite hard to pull, then I could definitely see all versions of the card retaining a bit more value for a little bit longer. This card will probably stay closer to $30 to $35 for the Ultra Rare just because it's still the lower rarity, so it's still going to dip, but it's not going to dip as much as people say. However, if they print it as a super or an ultra where you're pulling two of each of those rare in every pack so that you theoretically are pulling quite a few of them, I could see the price dropping down even further for the lower rarities down to $15 to $20. This is something that we'll have to wait and see on until we get the Megaton rarity of this card confirmed since it could definitely go either way. Now of course it's not the case that absolutely everything from Rising Rampage, Chaos Impact, Dark Neostorm, and Savage Strike is being included in the tins as Konami chose to omit a few cards. However, for the most part, these cards are irrelevant, so I wouldn't worry about them too much myself. Of course, this didn't stop some people from looking at the list and reasoning that something might be an interesting buyout target. Most notably is Fortune Lady Every, a synchro monster from Rising Rampage. Fortune Ladies have never really been meta relevant, and this card's release didn't make them relevant by any means. It has kind of an odd effect where you can summon it from your graveyard during your opponent's turn and then banish one of their cards during your standby phase, but really, no one I don't think is going to be playing this card anytime soon. This is one of those secret rares that you just never wanted to pull from the set, and just because this card isn't being reprinted in the Megatons, that doesn't make it any more viable. It does have the benefit of being like a waifu type card that I guess will create some sort of demand for it. And I think I did read somewhere that it and Appaloosa were the, actually the short printed cards from Rising Rampage. So maybe if it is a bit harder to pull, it will go up in price in the extremely long run. So yeah, you could gamble on this card and hope that it just never gets reprinted and some thirsty Yu-Gi-Oh players are going to drive its price up. But this card was within the last week as high as $15, it is now at $10 and that's still a bit too high for me to pay on this card. I would offload your copies as soon as possible and get whatever value possible while you can. So actually there's one card that isn't going to be reprinted in the 2020 Megatons that might be worth mentioning, it is Impcantation Chalice Lime. This card is a rare from Savage Strike and it's a pretty useful card since you can pitch it and another card from your hand to summon an incantation from your deck which will typically trigger that incantation and get you a search in addition to the body on the field. This card does have very limited applications, I believe the only deck that currently is playing it is Megalith, which has the one surprise showing like a week or two ago but hasn't really done anything in the meta other than that. This card is just a rare, but they're currently between $4 to $5 a piece, which is a fair amount for just a rare card. I believe that Megaliths only play one or two copies of it, but as a rare, this card is probably going to be a little bit annoying to find. If Megalith starts to see a bunch of play after the top that we saw from it, I could definitely see it getting more expensive and approaching around $10 each, but if not, which is more likely because people know what the deck does now and how to play around it, I would expect it to stay steady at its current price until it eventually gets reprinted. It's definitely something that you guys should be digging out of your bulk if possible and offloading your excess copies of since I definitely think there's a great chance that even though it was missed in the Megatons, it could be given that hollow upgrade in something like an OTS tournament pack. One last card that I want to mention here as something that you guys should probably be looking at picking up soon is Chaos Space. So there has been a lot of hype for Chaos Space and I know that early on people were freaking out about it and picking them up at like $5 a piece and the card is very good in something like Chaos Dragon Link where you can search for Levianir or Wyver Burster or Collapse Serpent which are free additional extenders that you can throw out onto the board. However, despite this, Chaos Space is actually at one of its lowest price points ever, sitting now between the 2 to $3 mark for the super rare version. It is just now getting the unlimited printing of Toon Chaos, which should push it down a little bit more to just under the $2 mark, 
but I think that at this price point, it is definitely something that I think you should all be looking to pick up. In the Mega Tins, we have so many different cards that are being reprinted that were previously expensive in Dragon Link between cards like Starleach Seifert, Omni Dragon Brotar, and World Legacy Guard Dragon. However, with so many pieces now being much more affordable, people will look for other pieces of the deck in order to finish them off, and we will see the price of Chaos Space climb back up over time. Because of how new the card is, I don't think we're likely to see it get reprinted anytime soon, and I think that this price dip is the perfect opportunity for you guys to stock up on it before it sees another spike in demand that will drive up the price. Alright guys, that is it for today's episode. I was super happy with the Mega Tin reveals, there is just so much value that's going to be in this set, it is crazy. I ordered 7 cases of the Mega Tins, so I'm going to have a ton of fun cracking those open with my girlfriend. I am a bit disappointed by the 3 TCG exclusives that we saw. I thought for sure we were going to get Crossout Designator or something like that after getting Nibiru and Dark Ruler No More in last year's tins, but oh well, that is okay. Once we get the rarities confirmed, I will of course be doing a video where we cover the cards that I think are undervalued that you guys should be picking up from the Mega Tins, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that sometime next week. Anyways guys, if you enjoyed today's Market Watch episode, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button for me and let me know. Also make sure you leave a comment in the comment section down below, let me know what kind of stuff you guys are most looking forward to picking up from the 2020 Mega Tins, whether that's sealed product or just the singles, and what cards and new rarities you guys are looking forward to seeing. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you subscribe to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself here on the channel. And uh, yeah, so until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.